begin with a confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O oh God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free. Free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for this evergreen crown that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the first candle on this wreath, rouse us from sleep that we may be ready to greet our Lord when he comes with all the saints and angels. Enlighten us with your grace and prepare our hearts to welcome him with joy. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. Let us pray. God of deliverance, you rescued, rescued Daniel from the mouths of the lions when he was punished for worshiping you. Liberate all who are endangered for the sake of their faith and rescue us from anything that separates us from worshiping only you. For the sake of the one who made your name known to all people across land and seas, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. Our ears and our hearts are open. A reading from Daniel. Darius decided to appoint 120 chief administrators throughout the kingdom and to set over them three main officers to whom they would report so that the king wouldn't have to be bothered with too much. One of these main officers was Daniel. Because of his extraordinary spirit, Daniel soon surpassed the other officers and the chief administrators. So much so that the king had plans to set him over the entire kingdom. As a result, the other officers and the chief administrators tried to find some problem with Daniel's work for the kingdom, but they couldn't find any problem or corruption at all because Daniel was trustworthy. He wasn't guilty of any negligence or corruption. So these men said, we won't find any fault in Daniel unless we can find something to use against him from his religious practice. So these officers and their chief administrators ganged together and went to the king. They said to him, long live, long live King Darius. All the officers of the kingdom, the ministers, the chief administrators, the royal associates, and the governors advised the king to issue an edict and to force a law that, the, that for 30 days, anyone who says prayers to any god or human being except you, your majesty, will be thrown into a pit of lions. Now, your majesty, issue the law and sign the document so that it cannot be changed. As for the law of Medea and Persia, which cannot be annulled. Because of this, King Darius signed the document containing the law. When Daniel learned that the document had been signed, he went to his house. Now his upper room had open windows that faced Jerusalem. Daniel knelt down and prayed and praised his God three times that day, just like he always did. Just then, these men, all gang together, came upon Daniel praying and seeking mercy from his God. Then they went and talked to the king about the law. Your majesty, didn't you sign a law that for 30 days any person who prays to any god or human being besides you, your majesty, would be thrown into a pit of lions? The king replied, the decision is absolutely firm in accordance with the law of Medea and Persia, which cannot be annulled. So they said to the king, one of the Judean exiles, Daniel, has ignored you, your majesty, as well as the law you signed. He says his prayers three times a day. When the king heard this report, he was very unhappy. He decided to rescue Daniel and did everything he could to do he could do to save Daniel before the sun went down. But the men all gang together came and said to the king, You must realize, Your Majesty, that the law of Medea and Persia, including every law and edict the king has issued, cannot be changed. So the king gave the order, and they brought Daniel and hurled him into the pit of lions. The king said to Daniel, Your God, the one you serve so consistently, will rescue you. A single stone was brought and placed over the entrance to the pit. The king sealed it with his own ring and those of his princes so that Daniel's situation couldn't be changed. The king then went home to his palace and fasted through the night. No pleasures were brought to him and he couldn't sleep. At dawn, at the first sign of light, the king rose and rushed to the lion's pit. As he approached it, he called out to Daniel, worried. Daniel, 
servant of the living God, was your God the one you served so consistently, able to rescue you from the lions? Then Daniel answered the king, Long live the king. My God sent his messenger who shut the lions' mouths. They haven't touched me because I was judged innocent before my God. I haven't done anything wrong to you either, your majesty. The king was thrilled. He commanded that Daniel be brought up out of the pit, and Daniel was lifted up. Not a scratch was found on him, because he was trusted in God. The king then ordered the men who accused Daniel be brought and thrown into the lion's pit, including their wives and children. They hadn't even reached the bottom of the pit before the lions overpowered them, crushing all their bones. Then King Darius wrote the following decree. To all the peoples, nations, and languages inhabiting the entire earth, I wish you much peace. I now issue this command. In every region of my kingdom, all people must fear and revere Daniel's God because he is the living God. God stands firm forever. His kingship is indestructible. God's rule will last until the end of time. He is rescuer and savior. God performs signs and miracles in heaven and on earth. Here is the proof. He rescued Daniel from the lion's power. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We join in the gospel affirmation. Alleluia. Show us your steadfast love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The whole assembly got up and led Jesus to Pilate and began to accuse him. They said, We have found this man misleading our people, opposing the payment of taxes to Caesar, and claiming that he is Christ, a king. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, That's what you say. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and crowds, I find no legal basis for action against this man. But they objected strenuously, saying, He agitates the people with his teaching throughout Judea, starting from Galilee all the way to here. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So I'm wondering if we have children here today. I'm looking at the screen. Give me a high sign if you're here today. Kids, hi, Eric. <laughs> All right, well, let me show you what I have here for the kids. I have Advent read stuff. Uh, we are making available today materials for refreshing your Advent wreath. So if you have a ring or if you need one, we have candles, we have blue ones and white ones. We have beautiful greens that the Cavaliers brought back with them from Muskegon, a couple different kinds. And we have bright glittery things and pretty bows and ribbons and fruit to decorate your wreath. Uh, we also have a booklet of devotions for the season of Advent and then into Christmas. Uh, so you're invited, encouraged to stop by church uh, following worship between 11 and 4 this afternoon to pick up the supplies that you need to refresh your wreath for this season. There also is a prayer for every week in here. So for today, the prayer is to bless your Advent wreath when you light the candle for the first time at supper or at some point today. Uh, we're asking if you would take a picture of your family or whoever's in your household doing these things and send it to the church office. We know we can't be together during Advent, but we want to keep up with each other. We want to see uh, the congregation as we uh, hold these Advent traditions and 
Uh, so there are prayers for blessing baked goods. Show us your baking or your goodies that you're making. There's a prayer for blessing your Christmas tree uh, and then blessing the crash and a prayer for Christmas dinner included in the devotional booklet. So even if your Advent wreath is all ready to go, stop by church and get a printed copy of the booklet. Otherwise, it is in the e-news for um, this week, and you can make a copy to use at home. So I hope that you're able to uh, enjoy the booklet and all that it's offering, as well as the ways that we're trying to stay connected with each other. We wish everyone a blessed Advent. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from the one who was and who is and who is to come, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, some of you have already shared your uh, Christmas lights. You put up your Christmas tree. Uh, and as I scrolled through Facebook last night, I noticed that quite a number of people have already brought out the Christmas lights, put up their Christmas trees, strung the lights outside their home, even gotten, as Chris has uh, told us this morning, gotten all the Christmas decorations out. Even pastor friends of mine have their Christmas trees up before the turkey is even all eaten up, before uh, the first candle is lit on your advent wreath on your dinner table and i want you to know that i completely understand i understand that in the midst of this pandemic when we can't be doing the same uh, rituals together in christian community that we need some place that is bringing us some light in the midst of what feels to be such a heavy time, that we're looking for those glimpses of joy and a way of holding hope in the midst of this pandemic time. Like many of you, uh, we have had trips canceled. We were supposed to be in Virginia this weekend celebrating Thanksgiving with my family. And it's always sort of bittersweet because we get to see what's happening in Virginia through Zoom or FaceTime, not usually there in person. Well, my niece FaceTimed me yesterday afternoon to tell me that she and her longtime boyfriend, Nick, got engaged yesterday. And it was sad to me because we were supposed to be there. No, it's not a big, huge disappointment, like the disappointments and the hurts that so many are living with right now. Perhaps the experience of loneliness, of being so unconnected to people who we usually see, or losing a loved one where we can't attend a funeral or be with the rest of the family. But it did make me a little bit sad that in the midst of all of this, uh, we are looking for those things that bring in a little bit of light. And I appreciated that my niece called and wanted Karen and I to know before she put it all over Facebook last night. This morning, we heard the story of Daniel in the lion's den. And as we have experienced the season of Advent all these many years, we usually don't hear from Daniel. It's a sort of unexpected uh, thing to hear this particular story at the beginning of this new church year, at the beginning of this season of Advent. Yes, we often hear from the prophets, and we will in coming weeks. And it's interesting to know that while as Christians, we categorize the book of Daniel 
as one of the prophets, a little bit of an unusual prophet as that goes. His book is divided really into two sections. The first section is a series of six tales, some stories. And that's where we have this story of Daniel. And then from seven to 12, we have these visions that Daniel has of the coming of the Son of Man, the one who will ish usher in God's greater presence in the world. And that's the part of Daniel that we are more familiar with. We hear that more often in our Sunday readings. We also don't have a gospel reading that comes from the end of one of the synoptics that emphasizes sort of the apocalyptic sense that God is breaking into the world in some rather dramatic and even frightening ways. Instead, we have this passage from Luke's gospel of Jesus and his trial before Pilate, where Pilate declares that there is no wrong that can be found in Jesus, and yet the religious leaders insist that Jesus be put to death. So it's an unusual way for us to begin this Advent season. So often we think of the book of Daniel as a children's story, and it is a wonderful story. The repeats and uh, being able to get the kids involved in um, echoing parts of the story, the drama of uh, the reasons for Daniel being in the pit and his experience overnight with the lions. For some of us, we might read this story as adults now and we say, well, that seems like some workplace drama that I've experienced in my lifetime. You know, here's Daniel, who is an outsider. He's a Jewish person during the Babylonian captivity, the exile, who has worked himself up in the court of the king and who has become literally a second-hand person. The king wants to elevate Daniel to be the one that all these others in the court should report to, but they're not having it. They're not gonna to report to that guy. And so they connive together to figure out how they might just get rid of Daniel. They convince the king to put into effect a law that will only last for 30 days, but that will declare that anyone who worships anyone but the king would be put to death by being thrown into a pit of lions. Well, as we learn in this story, Daniel is a righteous and faithful person. He prays three times a day to Yahweh. And he is so open about how he practices his faith that he opens the window in his room. Some translations even say he put in windows so that when he prays it would face Jerusalem and others could observe him at this prayer. So Daniel finds out about this law and what do you know, he goes right home to pray. He goes home to pray followed, of course, by these jealous co-workers who want to do him in, who see him pray and they go right back to the king and we know what happens next. Daniel ends up in the lion's pit. The king is so distraught because he cares about Daniel that he doesn't eat the rest of the day or the night no diversions could tear him away from his worry about Daniel. And when morning was barely breaking, the king goes to the pit, calling out Daniel's name, hoping against any kind of hope that Daniel would truly answer. Well, much to his surprise, as we know, Daniel does call out to the king. And what does he say? You are the most majestic king. 
I praise you and I praise Yahweh who has saved me from the mouth of the lions. You see, God has sent a messenger and has saved me. Well, the gruesome part of the story is, of course, that the detractors, the co-workers who connived this whole scheme, they and their families get thrown into the pit. That's the part we don't read so much with kids, right? We emphasize that God has saved Daniel from this terrible ending. So why are we reading this story in this first Sunday in Advent? How does it help to usher us in to this season as we wait for the new inbreaking of God into our world? Well, it seems to me that Daniel lifts up several things that can help us as we sit here in the midst of a pandemic, as we look at the world around us. You see, it's a story that emphasizes that God's power indeed is greater than the power that any empire can impose on its people. An empire, be it Babylon or Persia back in the day, or any empire today that seeks for its own power over others rather than attending to the care of its people. This story affirms that indeed God is a God of life and that whether we experience a, a salvation moment such as Daniel did, we remember people like Martin Luther King Jr. and Oscar Romero, people who risked their faith and their very lives to emphasize and to bring into being the actual good news that God has an interest in the dignity and the worth of every person. And while these people lost their life here on earth, their death also brought forth the good news that God is with us and is lifting up the lonely. These are themes of Advent, where God breaks into a world that is hurting, and God's heart is set on making it right. We, too, are looking for a sign of hope in these days. Yes, we put up our Christmas lights, but we also light a single candle of hope today and for the next whole week. A candle of hope that says that God is even now breaking into our world in ways that we can't even imagine. We don't do it with blinders on. We know that there are times when bad things happen to good people of faith. And we understand that this is a story that calls us too to risk some things in living out this faith and good news that God is breaking into our world once more. You see, the light that we kindle today grows over time as we too look to welcome the word of God, Jesus incarnate, the one in whom no darkness can overcome to be the true light that breaks into our world. And so I think this year, yes, this year, we put up the lights to make the way for Jesus to come once more into our world. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.
seek the mighty God in the most unlikely places as a child in a stable and in an empty tomb. May God hear these prayers from which come, which come from the unlikely corners of our lives. God, we pray that you deliver the church from hypocrisy, timidity, and judgmentalism. Increase our trust in your spirit, active in our words and deeds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray that you deliver creation from exploitation and destruction. Lift up advocates and protectors of the wild places of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray that you deliver the nations from violence and injustice. Grant wisdom and compassion to all leaders and of tribes and peoples. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray that you deliver those battling loneliness and fear. Help us to see the hidden needs of our neighbors and to reach out in love and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray that you deliver those enduring illness and disease. Rain down your healing power upon all those who need it. We remember all who are ill with COVID-19 or its after effects and all who are on the front lines. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray that you deliver us from apathy and lethargy. Grant us boldness of speech and action on behalf of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we give thanks for all those who have gone before us and whose lives have proven your great faithfulness and deliverance. Today, we give thanks to you for your servant, Shirley, as you welcome her into your everlasting embrace. Comfort all who mourn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us ears to hear, O God, and eyes to watch, that we may know your presence in our midst during this holy season of joy as we anticipate the coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We remain grateful for your contributions and gifts to the congregation to continue its ministry. We're also thankful for those of you who have returned a pledge card uh, and are able to let us know the ways that you would like to continue supporting the ministry of our congregation. Uh, we are grateful. Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you have provided us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts, the world will re receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is great to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, the beginning and the end, our salvation and our hope. We praise you for creating a world of order and beauty. When we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the ages, your son, Jesus, came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and on this bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. 
Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, eat and drink. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us and we rejoice. In this bread and cup you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So there are a couple of announcements for this week. Uh, the first is that um, <clears throat> excuse me, Meyer uh, Shopping Center, Meyer Store, is offering triple matching on their gift cards for neighborhood house. This is the one that's on Rochester Road in Auburn, and they are offering those purchase days on December 1st of this week and also on December 12th. So if you want to go yourself to that particular Meyer store and purchase however many gift cards you would like, uh, give them the funds, they will purchase them and get them to neighborhood house. Ginger Kettleson is also happy to collect your gift and to take it uh, one of these two uh, days. Uh, so if you want to include it with an offering and send it into the church office, uh, if you want to do it that way, likely December 12th will work out better for you. Uh, but she is happy to do that uh, run to Meyer in order to give that triple matching, um, which Neighborhood House uses so well. Um, and really appreciates um, our support. Also on Wednesday, Camino will meet. Uh, we'll have an Advent theme for this gathering, uh, and that will meet at 7 o'clock in the evening. And then we're adding uh, a wonderful opportunity for children in the congregation to have Advent story time with Joe McKinney. So they will sing the Advent song, and they will light the Advent wreath, have a story time, and a bedtime prayer. Uh, sounds wonderful, and uh, we thank Jill for offering that to the kids. So if you are interested, um, Jill will send all of the parents a link for the Zoom gathering for that every Thursday, uh, beginning this week, um, for the weeks of Advent. Receive the benediction. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior, fill you with love. The unexpected spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. 